Welcome to Wormhole Fundamentals, a video series from Adhocracy Incorporated that will explain each facet of wormholes and their mechanics in the universe of EVE Online. In this tutorial, we will cover how to crash wormholes. Unlike stargates, wormholes are not permanent. Wormholes will collapse after a certain amount of time, usually 16 or 24 hours. Wormholes will also collapse when a certain amount of ship mass is passed through them. You can take advantage of this to get rid of wormholes faster than just waiting for them to die. But you have to know what you're doing, or you risk trapping yourself on the wrong side. First of all, what is mass? Every ship has a mass statistic, which you can find on the fitting screen. That's the mass in metric tons. There are three ways to change the mass of your ship. First, fitting armor plates will increase your mass by a small amount. Second, turning on a propulsion mod such as an afterburner or micro warp drive will temporarily increase your mass while the module is running. Third, a heavy interdictor's warp disruption field generator reduces the mass of a hick while it is running. As we will see, changing your mass can be very useful when crashing a wormhole. Every wormhole type has two mass limits, the single jump mass limit and the lifetime mass limit. You can find these mass limits on Static Mapper or other wormhole information sites. The single jump limit tells you the largest ship you can put through that wormhole. For example, the U-210 has a single jump limit of 300 million kilograms, or 300,000 metric tons, exactly the mass of an Orca running a 100mn prop mod. That means that you can never jump any ship with a mass greater than 300,000 metric tons through this wormhole. The lifetime mass of a U-210 is 3 billion kilograms, or 3 million metric tons. After 3 million metric tons worth of mass have passed through a U-210 wormhole, that wormhole crashes. Well, roughly. There's a little bit of random variation thrown in here, plus or minus up to 10%. In order to crash a wormhole safely, you need to have some idea of how much mass is left. If you've been watching the wormhole since it spawned, that's relatively easy. Otherwise, you have to rely on the wormhole's mass stage. If you show information on a given wormhole, it gives you two pieces of information. First is whether or not it is end of life or within 25% of its time limit. The second is the mass stage. When it has more than 40% of its average mass limit left, ignoring the 10% variation, it will say has not had its mass significantly disrupted by ships passing through it. If it has been between 40% and 10%, it will say has had its mass disrupted, but not to a t critical degree yet. Less than 10% has had its mass critically disrupted and is on the verge of collapse. When you go over one of these mass stages, the wormhole will visibly shrink, but the visual effect is unreliable, so show information on the wormhole before your next jump. By using the total mass of the wormhole and knowing when you trip it to the next mass level, you can estimate how much mass is left and plan your crash in such a way that you know the final jump will put you on the side you want to be in. It's generally a good idea to put scanner probes on the crashing ships or keep a scanner ship on the far side until right before the final jump. One good insurance policy is to have a crasher hick. A hick running two bubbles simultaneously will have approximately the same mass as a pod. If the same hick also has a 100mn propulsion module, you can go out with about 1,000 metric tons and come back with 60,000 metric tons making it very unlikely that the hole will crash with the hick on the wrong side of it. Fly dangerously. 